Hi, welcome to Pop Paws Workshop. Today we're starting a brand new project of building a platform bed. Now this is a king size bed and it's being built at a very unusual material. I'm using dimensional lumber, which is two by twelves in this case. And to be able to do this, my son actually designed this bed and he built a model so that we could use this during the construction of it. So let's get started. Okay, in part one, we're going to be concentrating on building just the side rails. Now they have to be built exactly the same, but yet a mirror image. And then in this next series, we'll move into building the footboard and the headboard. And we'll continue this all the way through until the project is done. So you're not going to want to miss out on any of this project. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit subscribe and hit that little bell notification so that you won't miss out on any of the videos. So let's go ahead and get started now with part one and let's build some side rails. <laughs> I wanted to give you a quick overview of what this platform bed is going to look like. This is not exactly to scale, but all the components are there. To build this project, we're using an unusual material. Yes, that's right. We are using dimensional lumber. We're using a series of 2x12s, and I think there's a couple of 2x10s thrown in also. But the first step is just to be able to lay everything out, and this bed does interlock together. Now to do the layout, we took our model and broke it apart, and we're actually laying out the side rails using the model as a guide. And this is the side rail up close, and the dimensions are actually put in here so we know exactly what we need to cut on the actual 2x12. And what better tool to use to cut dimensional lumber than a circular saw. The first step, it was just cut the overall length and that was 7 foot 7 that you saw with the little model. The next step was just to cut the width of the 2x12 down to the proper size. Now this was designed so that we had the minimum of waste and be able to maximize every square inch of the dimensional lumber that we could. With the side rails cut to the proper length, it's now time to lay out the individual notches that, and the proper width for this. And again, it's back to the model so that we can reference the actual dimensions and lay it out onto the wood itself so that we can cut it. This model proved to be very, very handy to be able to have all the dimensions exactly the way it needed to be. Now I do want to point out that my son designed this bed and this bed is for him. And this was a lot of fun because this was a father-son project that we got to build together. To be able to cut the notch out, the best tool to be able to use was the jigsaw. Now this portion of the side rail that we're cutting out right now will actually support the mattress itself and the footboard portion will be where you can actually sit on the end. And this provides the support that's necessary to be able to hold that weight when you sit on the, the platform bed. Now the bulk of this long cut for the length was actually done on the table saw and we stopped short so that I could use the jigsaw just to be able to cut this final inside corner. And with this piece cut out, this is the first piece of the side rail now that is actually cut. And we'll set this aside and move on to the next piece. Now I said this was a family project because I had my son working, but I've also got his son working. Yep, got the helper in the shop. All right, turn toward the saw, grab hold to the wood. All right, and you're helping with it. Now this is a tool that you probably have never seen before, unless you're an old guy like me. This is my version of the biscuit cutter. It was an attachment to the router 
that is probably 30, 40 years old, maybe even older. But you know what? It still works. I set this router up decades ago just for this one purpose for my biscuit cutter. Well, the nice thing about this is it still works and it works quite well. The bad side of it is it's not near as convenient as the modern day biscuit cutters. But hey, I don't use it that often, but when I do, this is my go-to biscuit cutter. Now what I want to do is show you, this is the actual biscuit in case you haven't seen one before. And this goes into the slot and then the mating piece of board will go down on top of it and you glue everything together. And it's a very stable product and it works quite well. Now just in case if you're a biscuit joiner expert, you're going to notice that this is a little bit different application. This is the the board that we're working on right now is actually part of the platform where you can actually sit on it. And this is actually cut into the flat portion of the wood. And what we have to be able to do is slip this up on its edge and attach it. And of course for this application we're using plenty of glue. Because this is going to support the weight when someone sits on it. Now it's not the only thing that holds because there's also the mechanical portion of it, which is the wood that will support underneath. So it's actually going to be very strong, and the biscuit joints don't hold all the weight. Now for this project, we are using quite a bit of glue, and the product that I've chose to use is the Tight Bond, and this is the original formula, and I use this extensively in the shop. And no, I'm not sponsored by um, tight bond, but it is a very good glue. And my son uses the famous finger to spread the glue just as I do. It works pretty well and you always have the finger handy to be able to spread that glue. No need for an extra tool. So with all the glue in place, the biscuits in place, it's time to put the top of this platform into position. Now it takes just a little bit of work to be able to get all of these biscuits aligned, but that's one of the beautiful things about using this type of process. It actually helps to align the wood. And now it's time to add clamps. Clamps, clamps, and more clamps. Now the glue and the biscuits are holding everything in place right now. In addition to that, the alignment is perfect. So really the only thing we need to do is just be able to add the clamps to be able to hold everything in place while the glue dries. And the real question that needs to be answered is do we have enough clamps? As the old saying goes, oftentimes you never have enough clamps, but you need at least one extra clamp more than what you need for the project. So here I think I used just about every one of my clamps and I do think I had one or two left. And as we clamp everything together, of course, the final step has to be where you wipe off all of the excess glue. Now the next step is just to let this dry overnight. And then tomorrow I'm going to come back, take all these clamps off, set this side rail off to the side, and build the second one. And of course that one will be the mirror image of this one using the exact same measurements. Now after everything had dried, we went ahead and did the sanding. And it took a lot of sanding because again, this is dimensional lumber, but it does clean up quite nicely. And it looks really good. To build the second side rail, I got my son back in the shop with me. And he pretty much built this one all on his own. And here you can just see where he's adding the biscuit joints again. And using this ancient, absolutely ancient biscuit cutter. It still works. And actually, I'm very curious. I would like to know, and please leave me a comment in the comment section below, if you've ever seen one of these biscuit cutters before. I'd be curious to know. Now, I want to give you a quick shot of the second one all glued together. And again, a look at the tight bond glue. We use this glue in the shop by the gallon. And the Type Bond Original is a good go-to glue that I use for these types of projects. It has been very, very successful in my shop. 
And again, I'm not sponsored by Type Bond, but I do want to show you what I use. In the next video, we're going to build the footboard. And the footboard has some unusual pieces in it that we have to be able to have so that everything interlocks together. And you don't want to miss that video. This project is going to be done over several different parts. So please subscribe and stay tuned for the next one. Hi everyone. Thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.